This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with people with kleptomania to learn the truth about this rare disorder in which people experience an irresistible urge to steal. By the end of this video, we'll find out how compulsively stealing from everyone in your life can feel unbearably isolating, how stealing might give a serotonin rush akin to drug use, and how living with multiple arrests for stealing weighs on someone with this disorder. Is kleptomania a serious disorder that can affect anyone when they least expect it? Or is it just an excuse to steal and get away with theft without remorse? Hello, Amber. Hi, Anthony. Terrence. Hey, Anthony. Tabitha. Hi, Anthony. How has kleptomania affected your life most? I shut myself off from the world. I have never stuck with friends. I haven't stuck with family. I'm very shameful about my kleptomania and I don't like to share it because, you know, how do you tell people that you have a problem with stealing? You know, they're automatically not gonna trust you. I lived a secret life for about 10 years from age 15 to 25. I had two uh, arrests that definitely took a toll on me in terms of the embarrassment and the cost and the fear around that. It sort of traumatized me, to be honest. I just felt completely compelled to do it. Mm -hmm. I felt like the behavior was not controllable. It made me question a lot about myself. Can you get into the emotions that you felt before, during, and after stealing something? You're really nervous and you're sort of like excited and also a bit of dread mixed in. Sometimes I would feel like excited or high or powerful. Other times I was really stressed and it would seem to kind of take the edge off. You're like, I felt so good after that. That sense of relief, that that um, anxiety, that pressure is over. It almost feels like you purposely induce that that stress, that adrenaline, that rush mm -hmm. of maybe I'm going to get caught. This thing is potentially dangerous because you want to feel that sense of relief. Absolutely. Almost always, I would feel somewhat guilty or bad after, or like, oh, what are you doing? I was living not only a double life or a secret life, but a Jekyll and Hyde existence. I was trying to be Mr. Super Good, cleaning the house, cooking, helping my mom. Then I would kind of like go out and steal, but I think that by trying so hard to be perfect, I think something grew out of it. How extreme would you say that your symptoms of kleptomania are? very extreme, I would say. It was not just a daily occurrence, it was often a multiple times a day occurrence. If I was in a place where it was possible, it was gonna happen. I couldn't go a day with or a minute without stealing. A minute? It was like a s obsessive thoughts almost, like you can't let go of it. Do you think kleptomania is something that you are born with or do you think maybe it's trauma initiated? I have experienced kleptomania in the context of having a restrictive eating disorder, anorexia nervosa. In my experience, certainly not something I was born with. When the body goes into energy deficit, i.e. you don't have enough food on a day-to-day -day basis, biologically, the body perceives itself to be in a famine environment. Mm. I'd had an eating disorder for three to four years before the kleptomania came in. And I think that as my brain had been in an environment of resource scarcity. I think that that sort of prehistoric part of our brain that deals with survival just begins to think, well, you know, there's not enough food in the environment, so resources are scarce. That's where the desire to take things came from. When we present our brains with the perception of resource scarcity, our brains start to act in really bizarre ways. Anything, I was just taking it home and hoarding it. And even while I was doing that, I'd be thinking, weird. Um, <laughs> but I still wanted to do it. Do you feel like part of you was like, oh, it's there in case I need it? No, absolutely. I don't know, in case the apocalypse came or something and then and I would have plastic wrap, so I'd be fine. Your brain almost felt like you were in the apocalypse. What also developed for me was extreme anxiety about spending money. I couldn't. It was crippling for me. Do you feel like there was part of you that was nervous about giving more resources away than you were receiving. You're just gonna keep everything that you can. You're gonna save everything that you can. Mm -hmm. I could not buy a 25 cent toilet roll, you know, and that's where I needed things like toilet roll. And that's actually how it started. I started by stealing small things. Do you think addictions to things like drugs and gambling compares at all to kleptomania? 
I really found it very hard to stop stealing for very long. I feel driven. I feel like I can't stop myself. I feel so much anxiety or discomfort when I'm not acting out or getting my drug that I feel I almost have to do it to get relief. They all have to do with impulse control, trauma, and pain. Stealing was the only way I was able to get my dopamine levels back to the way that they needed to be and helped me function throughout the day. Even just thinking about stealing was enough to get me going and get me up out of bed. I had substance abuse issues because substances were the only thing that kept me from stealing. It's mm. like if I wasn't on something, I wanted to steal and I, I hated myself for, for stealing and I didn't want to do this. I'm like, I'm better off being a drug addict and that's more acceptable than it is to be a kleptomaniac. Unfortunately, some people go about their pain and their suffering in ways that aren't socially acceptable. As a therapist who deals with a lot of people who have kleptomania, are there any commonalities that you notice between them? I think a lot of codependency, money issues, a lot of repressed anger, passive aggressive behavior, losses, traumas, betrayals, injustices. You never know what your breaking point can be. And we can all have a breaking point where we can do something we thought we would never be capable of doing. I definitely felt like that growing up. You know, my, my family was on the, the border of poverty. We had government assistance. We were on mm -hmm. food stamps. And when I was 14, I would go grocery shopping for my family. And as I was checking out, I would forget to take the six pack of soda from the bottom right. and put it on the conveyor belts. I felt the biggest rush in the world when I walked away knowing that I'd paid for everything but not that $3. And in the back of my head, it felt like resource hoarding. I felt like, ooh, you know, I don't even have to tell my mom, but next month she will have an extra $3 when she's counting her bills and she'll be happy that she didn't yeah. have you know, this deficit of $3. I and I felt this sense of control, like I was contributing to the family. In many ways, it was like I, I couldn't work at the time to make money for the family, so I would save money. But you kind of got a little glimpse for yeah. yourself of like what it can feel like in different ways, like the hook. Saving a few dollars, logically, it doesn't make sense that it's gonna make any big difference in the grand scheme of things. But a little bit at a time, saving a few dollars like you did, it can have a somehow an emotional or psychological or symbolic impact. When did you first start exhibiting behavior that you now know is linked to kleptomania? I would have been about 20. I took a comic book at about age 14 from a convention. When I was a very young kid, I walked into a store with my mom. I saw like this broken toy that was like just sitting on like a shelf. And I was like, oh, it's broken. No one's gonna care that it's that it's gone, you know? So I took it and I just like put it in my coat pocket and I just walked out for whatever reason I never got caught. What types of things do you typically steal? It was cassette tapes, it was magazines, books, a toiletry item, maybe some food. Food, we steal all this food, but we're restricting food so we're not gonna eat it, but we just feel better knowing it's there. In case I really need it, if I'm really about to die, that's there, I'm safe. I would often steal nail polish because I'm like, oh, it's small, no one's gonna really care if I steal nail polish. I also had a thing for a shiny things, um, things that were very pretty, that looked elegant. I, I don't really go for big things because it's like, I know I'm going to get caught. I know I can't get away with that. I'm not even yeah. going to try to risk it. What do you think is your most ridiculous steal? I walked into a, sto a grocery store one day, went to like the alcohol section. I grabbed like one bottle and I put it in my bag, went to the bathroom, took the stuff off. When I got home, that was supposed to be alcohol. I didn't read anything. That was f***ing margarita mix. I was like, so <laughs> You went through all that effort to steal margarita mix, I, syrupy I, I, sugar I, water. I drank it though. You drank <laughs> What do you think was the most expensive thing that you've ever stolen? A pair of leather Italian boots. They were probably 400 pounds. They didn't even fit me. <laughs> you didn't try them on to walk out in them. <laughs> I stole $5,000 from my mom via her um, debit card. I was also addicted to games and stuff. Movie Star Planet. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I came home from school one day, she got the bill. I mean, I definitely felt bad after we sat down and had to talk about it. She was gonna like turn me in cause she was like, you know, you need to learn. You need to learn your lesson. She was gonna go to the bank and like say fraud or something, you know, obviously. And she just couldn't bring herself to do it. I confessed to it. I was like, I've, I've had this problem. I was like, remember that one time we went to the store when I was a kid? And I like explained it and she remembered. And I was like, well, it started there. The mushroom risotto, totally unaware that I'd been seen and just walking out the store, the security guard grabbed me took me off in a police car, spent half a day in custody. After that, you know, they were just like, mushroom was also, she's not worth it, and they let me out. It terrified yeah. me. 
but it didn't stop me. How often do you have people who kind of assume that kleptomania is just like an excuse? When you're not in a brain that has the desire to do that, it just seems so crazy. The idea of hoarding food, hoarding items, stealing, like it all sounds so bizarre and crazy and like, why would you do that? But I know how I felt at the time. And so I think with a lot of things, people don't just do things for the sake of being an asshole. You know, a lot of the time, there's a big reason behind a behavior. All the time, that's why I never talked about it. Cause it's like people, they really don't believe that this is a disorder. Something that keeps reoccurring that isn't going away, it's chronic. It's staying with us and it's not right. going anywhere. I don't want it because it makes me feel out of control. When I stole, I felt like I was in control, but you know, when I really sit down and think about it and I'm like, okay, I have these urges and I, I feel like I can't stop myself. I feel like I don't have any self-control. It's like, you know, that's counterproductive. You want self-control, yet you keep stealing. You keep lying to people. You keep telling them that they're not seeing what they're seeing. And you're being a, a terrible person just to cover up your lies and your addiction. And it's just, it really does hurt. That's the element of addiction that I think many people don't talk about, is the reason that there are these perpetual loops of addictive behaviors because the thing that you do to cope is what causes you to feel even deeper in the hole and make you feel like you need to cope even more so then you do that thing again bigger or more frequently and it just becomes worse and worse and that's how people dig themselves deeper into these holes of addiction we can't get help if we don't talk about it if people keep sitting here and saying that this isn't a disorder and that people are just selfish kleptomania is just going to be something that people never get treated for gizzy wants to know if after stealing you ever feel compelled to return the item. After I've recovered, you start to give a f again about what other people might be feeling. And that can be devastating because then you look back and you're like, oh my God, what did I do? I was such a selfish. I certainly would have, if I could have then taken everything back. That's why my friend and I started a nonprofit called unsteal.org, where you can return money directly to the retailer, whatever amount you want and we will be the middleman to make sure you're anonymous and make sure with no charge, get some money to the person so you can feel less guilty and make an amend as many people in recovery want to do in a safe way. Were you ever officially diagnosed? I was diagnosed um, with kleptomania at the age of 16. Have you ever talked about kleptomania or your stealing habits before that or did you keep that from your therapist? I kept everything from my therapist. When she found out, she was like, I'm not surprised, Amber. You have like a lot of impulse issues and you have a lot of depression and anxiety. I'm not surprised, you know, the trauma that you talked to me about, you know, the, the relationship with how you have with your mom and your family. I'm not surprised this is how you're coping. And how has your life changed since receiving that diagnosis? When I got that diagnosis, it was like, okay, this is a serious thing. Now I can no longer run from it. I can no longer hide from it. I can no longer suppress it down and act like it's not there and act like it's not a problem. It is on paper. It is in a system. People know about it I, I have to you know my mom obviously knows about it and I'm gonna have to tell my family eventually maybe they're gonna know about this now <laughs> so it's like my family they're gonna be so shocked they're gonna be like really you, you dealt with that I are you gonna have family members who might see this and never have known beforehand definitely I love y'all um, I'm sorry I probably have stolen from y'all at least once I really do apologize I have a problem <laughs> um, we'll talk about it later but yeah <laughs> hi I'm here <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. You just confessed to some people that in your life. It's very painful, but I am working through it. And I hope you know that I, I still do love you. And I have a lot of remorse and a lot of guilt and, uh, you know, a lot of anxiety and depression surrounding this disorder. And I'm sorry I never talked to you about it. And I'm sorry I never confessed if I did steal from you. I'm really sorry. I know this is hard to hear, but it's necessary for my growth and for us to have a good relationship. I told my mom I was very worried. I mean, her jaw literally dropped open. That's how well you had hid it from her. Nobody knew. Before we continue learning about the world of kleptomania, do you still feel urges? I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this episode, which is dope. I love Audible. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, motivation, and thousands of popular and extremely good podcasts. As an Audible member, you get one credit every month that's good for any title in their entire premium selection. Yes, all the best stories under any genre. And the best part is whatever titles you choose, you get to keep forever in your Audible library. I just finished listening to this book called The Comfort Crisis, which really helped put things into perspective for me and helped me realize that 
a lot of the comfort that we get to enjoy in modern living may have detrimental effects on our mental health and even our physical health. And next up on my list of books to listen to is this book called Ice Planet Barbarians, which I am super stoked. I hear really good things about it. The Audible app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. And new members get the opportunity to try Audible for 30 days free. Go to audible.com slash spent or text spent to 500-500 to learn more about Audible. That's audible.com slash spent or text spent to 500-500. And while I've got you here, I'd also like to thank Honey for their continued support in sponsoring this series and allowing us to explore some of these deeper topics. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. So you don't have to sit there at checkout wondering if you could be saving a ton of money because if Honey finds a working coupon, a Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online from tech to popular fashion brands and food delivery. So you're pretty much set with whatever you buy online. Honey has saved me way too much money, including the socks that I am wearing at this very moment. Are you really gonna, okay, you know what? Here's a, there, okay, proof. It's there, it's in the pudding. It's not in the pudding, it's on my foot. Did I mention that Honey is literally free? And it installs in just a few seconds, so if you want to do yourself a solid and also support this series, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free, and if you go to joinhoney.com slash Padilla, you'll be directly supporting this series. Now back to the world of kleptomania. Do you still feel urges? No, not at all. In fact, it's bizarre. I'm completely the opposite. It seems like your life is completely different after uh, gaining some control of your eating disorder. A complete turnaround. I did still recently. I stole like a couple of days ago and um, actually that solidified it for me. I'm like, okay, this is still clearly an issue. I still can't control myself. So you know what? I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna take responsibility and I'm gonna um, do this to help other people as well as help myself and be more understanding. Do you feel like talking about this in, on a platform will actually help you in many ways? Absolutely. I was scared for like the criticism, but you know what helped is reading through your comments. You know, I noticed people are very understanding. Your audience is very understanding. Well, thank you for trusting me with such a serious topic and being so vulnerable with me and trusting the audience. You know, a huge shout out to all of you watching right now. I, I didn't know that this kind of a supportive group of people ever existed on the internet, but yet here we all are. We all, you know, found each other in, in, in some way. And I just want to say thank you for being so supportive. I mean, like today we have Amber on here who might not have ever felt comfortable talking about this in front of so many people, which, you know, this could potentially help so many people without all of you being so encouraging. So. Honestly, thank you. Thank you so much to all of y'all. Now that I'm putting it out there, it's like I got that release. I'm like, I don't have to ha hold this burden to myself anymore. And yes, that comes with possible backlash, but I would rather deal with that than deal with this thing that's just that's just festered up inside me. If anyone is watching and has kleptomania or feels like they might have kleptomania, but they are nervous about coming to terms with that due to the negative stigma, is there anything that you'd want to say to them? First of all, do not judge yourself. It's very unlikely that it actually means anything about you as a person. And then you've got to look at, okay, well, why is my brain thinking that this is a solution? And you've got to be able to trace it back to what is the driving the urge to do that. Just because you have those urges, it doesn't mean that you are this type of person. No, it doesn't mean anything about you. When I have things going for my life, when I keep myself busy, when I'm putting my time and, and you know my energy into passions, I don't have that urge to steal anymore. Find things you love, you're worthy of it. I wish someone told me that when I was a, a teenager. I shut myself off from the world. And I didn't have people around to tell me that things were gonna get better. I had to just, trust my intuition that things would. And if I didn't have trust in myself and I didn't trust my intuition, I probably wouldn't be here. And I hate to say that, but I mean, it's true. So trust yourself. What do you think is the biggest misconception about kleptomania? People will automatically assume that you'll take from anybody, any place, any time, 90 to 95% of them. If you left your wallet or your purse or your car keys, or even your car running in front of them, they wouldn't touch it or they'd pick it up and give, hey, you dropped your wallet. That we don't feel remorse, that we don't feel guilt. We do feel, you know, we have emotions, we're, we're human. When I wake up, it's the first thing that I have to think about. Okay, am I gonna steal today? Or am I gonna be a good person and follow my morals? All right, 
you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. Hi, follow me at Euphoric Amber on Instagram and on YouTube. If any of you are interested in a great podcast, connectionismagic.com. TavithaFarrar.com. Lots of blogs and free resources, podcasts, YouTube on eating disorder recovery. And I do cover these kind of more out there topics like kleptomania. Y'all subscribe to Anthony's channel. If you don't, I might steal stuff from you. Just oh, no, shit. Just subscribe, subscribe, <laughs> to, subscribe to Anthony. Please, and he's helped so many people. Please subscribe. Do it Thank now. You. Do it now. Well, there you have it. I spent a day with people with kleptomania. And I feel like I understand how misunderstood this disorder really is and how experiencing traumatic events in one's life that make you feel powerless can understandably make someone desire feeling like control is still in their hands. Or how feeling resource scarcity can cause urges to acquire more in order to feel a sense of safety. My ex, he watches your channel, so I know he's gonna see this, and um, oh. that's gonna be interesting, so. <laughs> Hello, Amber's ex. Hi there, I hope you're doing well. I know our breakup wasn't the best, but um, I wish you the best. <laughs>